John Williams. No. So this is short. Loving God. Friends and members of our congregations, honored survivors and their families, elected officials and fellow clergy, every year for the past 47 years, our communities have gathered in the sight of God to remember the events of the Holocaust. We gather so that we will never forget the atrocities born of hate and fear and the massive loss of life and spirit of God's precious children. We gather to honor and to hear from the survivors who have lived to tell their stories. We gather to be together in community, in solidarity, in these days and for the facing of this very hour. We gather always in a spirit of love, grace, and mercy, longing for peace throughout God's world, and of course, peace in this amazing community that we share. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Loving God,
We come before you with very heavy hearts. Remembering the souls murdered during the Holocaust. We lament the loss of six million Jews. The millions of other victims of Nazi persecution. And victims of all genocides. In the horrors of our shared history, We recognize the destructive patterns that continue to drive people apart. We seek your courage to face our part in the division. We bid your help to turn away from our hatred. And ask for your forgiveness when we give life to fear. May our minds be attentive to the memory and our hearts be moved to bear witness to the lives and to the legacy of the survivals through our prayers and in our actions. Help us to stand with those who are suffering. We pray always that good may triumph and your love prevail. Amen. Just over six months ago, terrorists killed more than 1,200 people in their own homes and peaceful public gatherings, injuring in the most horrible ways thousands more, and kidnapping 253 men, women, and children. It was the most deadly massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. And so this year, our gathering here in South Orange and Maplewood is different. It is different because the day after the attacks, well before Israel had done anything in response, while Israelis were still counting the dead while families were searching hospitals in hopes of finding missing loved ones, people all around the world spoke up, not in solidarity with the victims, but against Jews. Not against Israelis or the Israeli government, but against Jews. It is different to be remembering the Holocaust in a year when, here in America, Jews have had our sense of security turned upside down. When the Anti-Defamation League has recorded more than 2,000 anti-Semitic incidents in the United States since October 7th, like the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, having to shut down its doors while close its doors while activists outside on the street shouted the names of the museum's Jewish board members. Like the incident just months ago, here in our own town, where the words kill the Jews were scrawled on one of our school's bathroom stalls. In a year when my own synagogue has had pictures of our building posted online with the tag, all that is missing is the swastika. This year, this commemoration feels different because the world is different, or maybe it is not so different after all. There is one Jewish state on the earth but in 2023, the United Nations issued 14 rebukes to that Jewish state. The rest of the world combined earned only seven. 
Since 1948, the United Nations has passed 226 total resolutions against Israel, 226, but against North Korea, 21. Against Iran, seven. This year's commemoration is different because while we will remember the past together today, there are 133 people being held in tunnels underground by terrorists for more than six months, captured by people who chose violence out of their hatred for Jews. Not all of the hostages are Jewish, but they are all being held captive by people who hate Jews. And so today's gathering takes on a different flavor this year. It means so much to me, to this Jewish community, to have an interfaith gathering where we are so visibly supported by our fellow clergy and our fellow citizens of all faiths. May all that we hear today bring us further into our resolve that by remembering we learn, that by learning we will change the world for better. May all who need our learnings and our blessings Feel our prayers and our resolve. Amen. And now we're going to have uh, our survivor candle lighting. Uh, we welcome members of the Seton Hall Prep Holocaust and Genocide uh, Studies Club to present our survivors. We will now be reading the biographies of those survivors who have joined us today. Paulette Dorfloffer was an infant living in La Destruce near, Mar near Marseille, France, when most of her family was rounded up and sent to Auschwitz on July 31st, 1944. Paulette was rescued by a nurse and raised in an OSC orphanage until she was adopted by the Wolf family from South Orange, New Jersey at age four and a half. Her birth father, mother, and five of her siblings died in the Holocaust. In 1971, Paulette discovered she had three surviving siblings and extended family living in France. She and her husband, Barry, traveled to France and were, and were reunited with her family. Paulette resides in Livingston and has three children and seven grandchildren. <clears throat> Fred Heyman was born in Berlin in 1929. Because his father received the Iron Cross for valor, serving in the German army during World War I, and because his mother had been born and raised a Protestant, the family was able to remain in Berlin until 1943, when it was clear that they were in danger of deportation to death camps. Unable to emigrate, the family went into hiding, becoming what the Nazi called U-boats or submarines. Through a combination of courage and luck, and with the help of a Catholic family, they managed to survive the war in Berlin. They then emigrated to the United States where Fred resumed his education, served in the US Army, married, raised a family, and enjoyed a successful career as an engineer. Fred has two children, four grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Mm -hmm. 
Danuta Kozlowski, a Roman Catholic, was six when Germany and Russia invaded Poland in 1939. Her father was arrested by the Russians and sent to a Soviet concentration camp. Danuta and the rest of, her, of their family were forced to Siberia, where they lived for two years in brutal conditions. At age eight, Danuta became blind and deaf due to starvation and illness. The family finally escaped and made their way from, Russian, from Russia through Persia and Palestine and eventually to England, where she met her husband, Ta Tadeusz. Danuta lights her candle in honor of her godmother, Vladislava Chomsa, the angel of Lvov, who was honored at Yad Vashem as a righteous Gentile. Vladislava worked with the Polish underground organization, Zegota, which provided Jews with food, false documents, and money, and saved Jewish children by hiding them in convents with Polish families, including their own. Danuta has three children and 11 grandchildren. <clears throat> Mark Schoenwetter was a young child in Bozostek, Poland, when Germany invaded his country and his family was forced out of their home. After his father was taken by the Gestapo, Mark fled along with his mother and younger sister. They spent a few months in a nearby ghetto and after escaping, they went into hiding in the Polish countryside where they remained for three years. By the end of the war, Mark was one of only a handful of surviving Jews from Bozostek. Mark emigrated to Israel with his mother and sister in 1957 and then alone came to the United States in 1961, where he found work in a jewelry factory. He immediately purchased a different jewelry company and remained in the industry until he retired in 2018. Mark has always lived by the saying, live every day with love, not hatred, and you will accomplish so much more in life. Married to his wife, Luba, for over 55 years and having two daughters, he says he has lived the American dream. Mark is very committed to, ho to Holocaust education and along with his daughters, founded the Mark Schoenwetter Holocaust Education Foundation. My name is Hedy Brash. I was born in Mishkals, Hungary in 1930. I studied music, dance, and sports as a child and appeared in both plays and commercials. I had a wonderful childhood until 1942 when my father, Alexander, was taken away to a labor camp, never to be heard from again. In 1944, my sister Eva, my mother Elizabeth, and I were moved to the Mishkos ghetto and later deported to Auschwitz concentration camp. Eva and I were separated from our mother and sent to Bremen, Germany to work as forced laborers. We were barely survived at that march in Bergen-Belsen where we were liberated by the British in April 1945. Following a year-long hospitalization in, in Sweden, my sister and I came to the United States to live with our grandmother and we later reunited with our mother. I returned to school and graduated from NYU in 1955 with a degree in occupational therapy. I married Jay Brash, a chemist, in 1955 we were married for 65 years. I am a member of the Board of Associates for the Holocaust Genocide Study Center to, at Drew University and received an honorary doctorate from Drew in 2012. I have shared my life story with over a thousand high school and college students in the hope of educating them about the dangers of an anti-Semitism and bigotry. I light this candle in memory of my father, Alexander Allen Bogan, my mother, Elizabeth, and my beloved sister, Eva.
Good afternoon. My name is Alan Levine. I have the honor of serving as chair this year of the South Orange Maplewood Interfaith Holocaust Remembrance Service. And I have the, the great privilege of introducing our speaker today. Tamara Reps Freeman, DMA, is the Holocaust Ethnomusicologist for the Association of Holocaust Organizations, the International Alliance of Holocaust Museums, Holocaust Education Commissions, and University Departments of Holocaust Studies. Dr. Freeman is an adjunct professor of Holocaust music, culture, and education at Montclair State University, St. Elizabeth University, and Yeshiva University. Her dissertation, Encouraging Racial Respect Through Holocaust Music, an Interdisciplinary Curriculum, is our nation's sole K through 12 Holocaust music curriculum. We welcome Dr. Freeman today, and I invite you to listen to her presentation and what she has to say and her, perform and her performance on the viola. Dr. Freeman. Good afternoon. Singing empowered Jews with resilience and resistance during the Holocaust. Composers held captive in ghettos and concentration camps created melodies and lyrics to withstand hardships and to fight tyranny. Their songs were eagerly shared in multiple languages, often in clandestine settings, such as this attic in the Terezin ghetto, depicted on the screen. While imprisoned in Terezin, the Czech artist Bedrich Fritta created this charcoal drawing of an illuminated accordion player surrounded by his fellow prisoners. Music meant community, comfort, and courage to defy the Nazis. Next slide, please. Before the Holocaust, the prolific Yiddish folk poet and composer Mordechai Gebertig composed Es Brent, It Burns. Gebertig's song was a call to arms following a pogrom in Prishtik, Poland in 1938. Gebertig wrote, Es Brent, Breeder, Es Brent. It's burning, brothers, it's burning. The moment could probably come when the village together with you could disappear in ashes and flames. It depends only upon you. Take the pails and put out the fire with your own blood. Don't stand there with idle hands. Show what you can do. Gebertic purposely composed the first two notes to sound like the siren calls of a fire engine. Bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. This two note motif appears five times in Esprint. <laughs> The viola I am playing was custom made by Luthier Josef Bausch for a woman named Taube Butzel, a Jew living at 9 Wrangelstrasse, Berlin, Germany. 
Tragically, Talba was taken from her apartment and forced onto a cattle car destined for Terezin. A brave, righteous Gentile neighbor rescued her instrument before the Nazis returned to loot her belongings. I am examining a brass plaque near the building's front door. The plaque is called a Stolperstein, literally a stumbling stone. Next slide, please. The German artist Gunter Demnig created tens of thousands of Stolpersteine to mark the last residence of Holocaust victims across Europe. The Stolpersteine are respected as the largest Holocaust memorial in the world. Next slide, please. Taube's Stolperstein reads, here lived Taube Butzel, born in 1865, deported in 1942 to Terezin, where she died on the morning on the 13th day of September 1942. Taube's viola will next sing the melody of a composer who won a song contest in the Vilna Ghetto. The composer was only 11 years old. Next slide. This young composer was Alec Volkovisky. The Vilna Judenrat, the Jewish council, wanted to maintain the city's cultural pride by continuing its annual song contests. Alec won first prize, which was a piece of bread with apricot jam. Alec's father, whose first name, sadly, I do not know, wrote the lyrics in Russian, which were later translated into Yiddish by Shmerka Kajajinsky, a poet, composer, and partisan fighter. Stiller, Stiller, quiet, quiet, was disguised as a lullaby. Its true purpose was to chronicle the murders of thousands of innocent Jews at Ponar, a nearby resort town. Stiller, stiller, lomer wachsen. Be still, be still. Graves are growing here. They were planted by the enemies. They are blossoming to the sky. There are roads leading to Ponar. There are no roads leading back. Sleep, my child, sleep. Freedom's light will soon be lit on your countenance. slide, please. Alex survived the Holocaust with his mother. He moved to Israel and changed his name to the more Israeli sounding name, Alexander Tamir. He became a piano professor at the Rubin Academy of Music in Jerusalem, where he teamed up with pianist Bracha Eden. Together, they were considered among the finest piano duet musicians in the world and even appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1958. I'm old enough to remember that show. <laughs> Next slide, please. I had the honor of chatting online with Alec Volkovisky, or Alexander Tamir, right before he passed away in 2019. I told him how much I loved his Stiller Stiller. He told me it was the only piece he ever composed.
Many songs, uh, next slide please. Many songs were composed in Vilna, which was known as the Jerusalem of Lithuania. Shmerka Kaczyzinski, the Holocaust poet, composer, and partisan, mentored young boys in Vilna and presided over the boys, boys meetings where his Jungt hymn, youth hymn, was sung. This song's major key, march rhythms, and fast tempo emboldened young partisans to perform daring rescue missions and to fight the Nazis. Here is the text of the youth hymn. Our song is full of solidarity. Bold is our hearty walk. Although the enemy guards us from the gates, youth thunders with song. Together we collect ourselves. Again, we steal our ranks. Next slide, please. Another partisan fighter, Hirsch Glick, was a beacon of cultural res resilience and resistance in the Holocaust. Glick founded an organization called Jungwald, Young Forest, which was a group of young Jewish poets in the Vilna ghetto, whose prose spoke of courage and revenge Glick and his fellow partisan, Witka Kempner, were members of the Fadenikta Partisana Organizatia, the United Partisan Organization. Glick's song, Still die Nacht is Eus gesternt, Quiet the Night is Starry, is a tribute to his comrade, who was credited as the first female Holocaust fighter for blowing up a Nazi train full of armaments. Still die Nacht is eus gesternt. Quiet, the night is full of stars. A girl in sheepskin and a felt beret. In her hand, she held a gun so tight at dawn, she crawled from the woods, garlands of snow in her hair. Her brave spirit gives all courage to fight for our freedom everywhere. Next slide, please. You notice how many young people there were who composed during this time. Leib Rosenthal published his first volume of poetry at the age of 14. In the Vilna ghetto, he became one of the most successful writers of musicals and theater reviews. 
these opportunities gave people resist, uh, resilience and comfort and a sense of normalcy. His song, Mir Leben Ebig, We Live Forever, was the grand finale of his theatrical review, Moshe Holt Zich, Moses Hold On. Seated in the auditorium were German soldiers and members of the SS who listened to Jews singing a Yiddish song about their enemies. German and Yiddish are very similar, so these enemies surely understood Rosenthal's defiant lyrics. Mir leben ewig, we live forever. And we are here, we live forever, we have no fear. We want to live now and to live on, to survive all these awful moments. Mir leben ewig, we live forever. Mir seinen do, and we are here. Classic, classically trained musician, maestro Herbert Zipper, and political journalist and lyricist Jura Seufer wrote the Dachau Lied, the Dachau song, while toiling next to each other, pulling boulders in a cart in the Dachau concentration camp. Next slide. The goal of their collaboration was to reach beyond resilience and resistance into realms of intellectual dignity. Zipper purposely made his melody very challenging to keep the starving prisoners' minds sharp. The Dachau Lied was included in clandestine concerts Zipper conducted in an abandoned latrine at the edge of the concentration camp. Next slide. This charcoal drawing was created in Dachau. Jura Seufer wrote, we've all learned the lesson of Dachau by now, and hard as steel, we won't bend. Be a man, comrade, stay humane, comrade. Do all your work, seize it now, comrade, for work frees us in the end. One of my graduate students created this drawing of Herbert Zipper's resilience and resistance against a background of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Next slide, please.
Large concentration camps assembled orchestras and bands, forcing the musicians to accompany the Nazis' unspeakable atrocities. They also entertained the Nazis at night as they were eating and drinking. Next slide. The Buchenwald SS commander forced composer Hermann Leopoldi and librettist Fritz Lohner Beda to write the Buchenwald Lied, the Buchenwald song, as a reflection of the Nazis' power over the Jews. How, however, the Commandant's naivete did not recognize the song's powerful messages of resilience and resistance. Leopoldi survived the Holocaust and said his song, quote, pleased the camp commander intensely. In the commander's stupidity, he did not see how revolutionary the song actually was. Buchenwald, we don't bewail our fate here, whatever may our future be. In spite of all, it's yes to life, we say here. For soon will come the day when we are free. In spite of it all, the day will come when we are free. While the choir makes its way up, allow me to introduce the two songs that they are going to sing. Zorschoin Kumendike Ule, May Salvation Come Soon, was written right after the Holocaust. The text was written, next slide please, by Schmerke Kaczerzynski, who visited displaced persons camps and took musical dictation of survivor's songs on musical staff paper. He published the songs in his volume, Lieder von die Ghettos und Lagern, Songs of the Ghettos and Concentration Camps. Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook wrote the melody. Rav Cook was the first Ashkenazi chief rabbi of British Mandatory Palestine. The second song that this beautiful intergenerational choir is going to sing was composed by Wolf Dormashkin, the youngest conductor in the history of the Vilna Symphony Orchestra. During the Shoah, he conducted the Vilna Ghetto Orchestra, which performed 35 concerts in 15 months of the ghetto's existence. He also conducted the 100-voice ghetto choir. While in the ghetto, Wolf composed a song called Stay Silent to reflect the prisoner's adherence to the Nazis' edict to stay quiet. But Wolf Dormashkin wrote in defiance, no one can stop us from crying silently. 70 years after Wolf Dormashkin's death, Cara Dio Guardi, a current American songwriter and pop singer, turned his haunting piece of music into an anthem of social activism. We will now hear the choir 
sing these two beautiful songs under the direction of Cantor Perry Fine. But first, choir, I have something to say to you. I heard your beautiful rehearsal this afternoon, and you are the epitome of the spirit of Holocaust resilience, resistance, and remembrance. The fact that all of you from different faith traditions and different ages and different communities have come together in solidarity speaks volumes of your character and your morality. I thank you all for your beautiful voices and for, for bringing these beautiful souls from the Holocaust alive. Nice intro there. Thank you. <laughs> the English translation for Zoltschon Kumen de Geula can be found on page eight, page eight of your program. <laughs>
this church, Morrow Memorial Methodist Church. Directed by Holland Jack Heights.
I think the choir deserves another rousing round of applause. The theme of this afternoon's program is Music of the Holocaust. Hirsch Glick wrote the lyrics to a Russian march. And this song became what is considered the national anthem of Holocaust victims and survivors. And you will find it on page nine in your programs. I think the best response to the choir's brilliant performance is for all of us to learn this national anthem together. I'll sing it for you once and then I'll teach it for you, but something tells me you're gonna pick it up right away. Something tells me that this is a very gifted and talented group. Zognit kein molas du gehst dem letzten Weg, hosch himlen bleien er verstellen bleue Tag. Kum in vet noch unser weiss gebank to show. Svet a poikt on unser trot mir sein in do. Go back to Kumen. Kum in vet noch unser weiss gebank to show. Svet a poikt on unser trot mir sein in do. See, I, I knew what this would happen. I knew it would happen. Repeat after me. And this is in Yiddish, so the transliteration is very similar to German. Zognit Kainmol. As du gehst. Dem letzten Weg. Hosch Himlen. Bleiene. Verstellen. Bloi Ateg. Kumen Wett. Noch unser. Ois gebank to show. You're doing beautifully. Svet a poik ton unser trot mir sein in do. Ready? Now the last two lines get repeated, so let's say it together beginning with Kumen. Ready? Begin. Kumen vet noch unser ois gebank to show. Svet a poik ton unser trot mir sein in do. Survivors have told me that when this is heard or sung, people are asked to stand if they are able. So please stand if you can. Repeat after me. Zognit kein molas du gehst im letzten Weg. Oh, you just want to sing it, don't you? Yes. Ready, let's begin. Zognit kein molas du gehst dem letzten Weg. Hosch himlen bleien er verstellen bleue Tag. Kum in vet noch unser Häus gebank to show. Svet a poikt on unser trot mir sein in do. Back to Kumen. Kum in vet noch unser Häus gebank to show. Svet a poikt on unser trot mir sein in do. That was beautiful. May God shine God's blessings upon you for singing Zognit Kain Mol so beautifully and so reverently. Thank you. Please be seated. The Yiskada Warsaw Shemay Rabba Be all the Mardi Vrah Hirose, 
Jewish tradition, the word chai carries a depth of meaning beyond its simple translation of life. It symbolizes resilience, progress, and the promise of future generations. For many Holocaust survivors, their families, their children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren are a powerful testament to the defeat of the Nazi regime's genocidal plan. This year, the Chai candles are being lit by Margie Freeman and her husband, Rabbi Lenny Levin, in memory of Margie's parents, Regina Freeman and Dr. Elias Freeman, who survived the Holocaust primarily by hiding in the woods around Sachau, Poland. Margie's mother, Regina, lived in South Orange from 2000 to 2009 and attended this service during those years. We invite any second, third, or even fourth generation survivors to stand with us today to commemorate their relatives who perished or survived the Holocaust.
Please be seated. My name is Beth Randall Brannigan, and I have been involved in this service since its inception 46 years ago, when my father, Max Randall, our rabbi, Yechiel Ornstein, and the incomparable Sister Rose Thiering joined forces to bring clergy and community together for the first South Orange Maplewood Interfaith Holocaust Remembrance Service and I must say being here today is very special because the last service I recall my father being in before he died was right here. I can see him standing here so proud as he worked with Danuta and other survivors in this very room. So it's, it's very special here. Two years ago, I had the pleasure of presenting the Sister Rose Thiering Award for Holocaust Education to Eve Morawski, a long-term committee member. Last year, I had the joy of presenting the award to Jim Ferrajaro, whose commitment, leadership, and dedication ensured that this service went on even when faced with the challenges of a global pandemic. And this year, I have the honor of presenting the award to Cantor Perry Fine. In the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, the clergy took a very active role. In fact, in the beginning, they created the service, they wrote the service, they were involved in every aspect of the service. As they say, the one thing we can count on is change, and while the clergy have always been an integral part of the service, over the years, the members of the Interfaith Holocaust Remembrance Committee took a more active role, more responsibility in planning the service, um, and in fact added a community march. And throughout the years, there was one thing that didn't change, and that would be that we could always count on Cantor Perry Fine to bring music and meaning to our service. Cantor Fine brought together youth choirs from synagogues and churches and adult choirs from throughout the community. He collaborated with others to ensure that the music selected complemented the theme of the service and the message of the service and bringing, as you experience today, an emotional response through music. On a personal note, Cantor Fine has seen my family through births and deaths, bar and bat mitzvahs, and weddings. Getting three kids out the door on the day my Amelia, my oldest, bat mitzvah was a feat, and we ended up coming into the synagogue 15 minutes after the service had begun. We rushed to the front row and sat down, and there was Cantor Perry Fine. He gave us a smile. He gave us a nod. He let us know all was well. Just as he had a calming influence that joyous, stressful day, he has been a steadfast, calming partner to my family, our committee, our community, bringing his musical brilliance and his amazing voice to our service every year. On behalf of the committee and the community, it is my honor to present the Sister Rose Thiering Holocaust Education Award to Cantor Perry Fine. Wow, wow, wow. My friends, I'm, I'm deeply touched and grateful for this reward, award. 
Thank you so much, Beth. Where's, where did she go? Where's, there you are. Thank you so much, Beth, for your kind. Some of the words were correct, some uh, a little exaggeration, but uh, they were great. To Alan and to the organizing committee for this recognition, and to Dr. Freeman, Dr. Tamara Freeman, for her amazing presentation. So thank you just for a beautiful presentation. And great on the viola, great on the viola, beautiful tone as well. You know, 32 years is a long time. When I first came to this community in 1992, I looked a lot differently than I do now. <laughs> and truth be told, I lived in this community only for the first 19 of those years in my capacity as cantor of Congregation Bethel before moving out west to Livingston where I now serve the Temple Beth Shalom community. So for these last 13 years living outside of, physically out of this community, it has never taken much convincing for me to stay involved in the mission of this service and its music. And I think the reason is threefold, and let me explain, and I promise to be brief. One is my personal family story. On my mother's side, I'm a second generation descendant of French Jews, family trapped. Okay. family trapped in Vichy, France, trying to evade the Nazis. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My mother at age 15 had to drop out of school and hide with her mother, my grandmother. Oh, okay, thank you. Had to hide with my, 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 her mother, my grandmother, and her sister, my aunt, struggling just to say, stay alive. My grandfather, Leon Burach, was deported to Auschwitz, never returning. My father was an American GI, a liberator of Dachau, who met my mother in France, helped sustain the family. And eventually, they were married, married there, and came to America after the war to start a family. My uncle on my father's side, the, my old, the oldest brother Joe, was killed during the war in North Africa at the hands of Rommel and buried posthumously in Arlington National Cemetery. I am here because of the courage of those who preceded me. But each year as well, I'm inspired by all of you, all of you who support this interfaith expression of remembrance led foremost by an organizing committee that is passionate, creative, and sensitive to its mission. And in particular, as Rabbi True did as well, a shout out to all of our non-Jewish friends for your support who makes this service possible. I, yes. I think back to Sister Rose, for whom this award is dedicated. This feisty Dominican nun, through her sheer persistence and power of persuasion, literally helped change anti-Semitic bias within, the Catholic, within Catholic Church doctrine. And Sister Rose, who remained throughout her life a passionate lover and supporter of the people of Israel, and who along with Rabbi Yechiel Ornstein and Max Randall, helped conceive of this interfaith day of remembrance. She supported Israel then, and she would have now. With all of the challenges of our times, it has never been harder to be Jewish. But spiking anti-Semitism on both the left and right, the amnesia by some of the events of October 7th, as well as the fate of the hostages in Gaza, and now Iran showering missiles on Israel. Thank you all for locking in support, coming together today, and going forward. We are stronger. 
We are stronger together. And finally, it's about the music. It's about the music. And for all who have given this music new meaning over the years, our interfaith choral community, Voices in Harmony, was conceived here, yes, in this church, Morrow Memorial Methodist, together with your past music minister, David Hutchings, as my partner, soon joined by Jason Asbury from Prospect Presbyterian down the street and cantor Erica Lippitz from Oab Shalom. Over the years, we created a community of singers devoted to finding an interfaith musical expression of hope and tolerance. And my friends, when we are long gone, the music will live on. In Mark Miller's simple yet elegant setting of the words found on an abandoned, abandoned wall in Europe, I believe in love, I believe in love, even when, even when God is silent. In the message of tolerance and fighting bigotry from Billings, Montana, 30 years ago, paper menorahs placed on the doors of Jews and non-Jews alike inscribed with the words, no hate, no violence, not in our town. And in the poignant melody we heard this afternoon, a melody composed in the camps and recast as a clarion call of defiance. We won't be silent, won't be silent, not for one more day. I thank you all for this award. And I want to thank all those who sang with us over these many years for the privilege to be part of this journey, this musical journey, this interfaith journey, forever voices in harmony. And finally, above all, I want to thank my dear partner and love of my life, my dear Mickey. <laughs> my sons, Yonatan and Daniel, without whom none of this would have been possible. Love to you all. Thank you again. Am Yisrael Chai. Yeah. 
full of mercy, you dwell in the heights. Shelter them beneath the wings of your presence, high among the holy and the pure, who shine like the brilliant heavens. Shelter them. Shelter the souls of our sisters and brothers of the house of Israel who were slaughtered in the Shoah. Small children, women, men, strangled, suffocated, burned to ash. They revered your name. Their souls passed into your care. Let Eden be their eternal resting place. Guardian of mercy, shield them and keep them forever in your protecting presence. Bind their souls to the living and to life. God, you are their inheritance. May they rest, ease them with peace. And let us all say together, Amen. Amen. The words of Mourner's Kaddish can be found on page 11. We join together saying, Yit Gadal, Viet Kadash, Shemei Rabbah, Bialma, Divra, Chirute, Nyamlich, Malchute, Bechayechon, Uviomechon, Uvachaye, Duchol Beit Yisrael, Bagala, Vizman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shemei Rabbah, Mivorach, Leolam, Lome, Almaya. Viet Barach, Viet Tabach, Viet Paar, Viet Ramam, Viet Nase, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shemei de Kudusha, Brich Hu, Le Ela, Min Kol Birchata, Veshirata, Tush Birchata, Venechemata, Damiran, Miyama, Vimru, Amen, Yehe, Shlama Raba, Min Shmaya, Vechaim, Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bim Ramav, who ya say shalom? Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. May the one who creates peace in the highest of heavens send peace upon each of us, upon all the people of Israel, as together we say, amen. On behalf of the committee dedicated to bringing this interfaith Holocaust Remembrance Service to our community for over 45 years, I extend heartfelt appreciation for your involvement today, whether you're present here at Morrow Memorial or joining us online. We wish to convey our gratitude to Dr. Freeman, to the participating choirs and clergy. Special thanks Tomorrow Memorial United Methodist Church and Reverend Lynn for graciously hosting this year, to those who offered their assistance, and to the elected officials who have steadfastly supported our work through the years. We are deeply honored to honor our local survivors in attendance, and we hold in our hearts those who cannot be here today. As a community of diverse faiths and ideologies, let us pledge to stand up against anti-Semitism, hate, and bigotry. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. If you would like to learn more about our committee's efforts, please seek out a committee member wearing a name tag or visit our website, rememberandtell.org. 
for additional resources. Next year, our service will be hosted by Congregation Bethel in South Orange. We encourage you to join us in singing, Let There Be Peace on Earth, as we conclude, followed by refreshments downstairs in Fellowship Hall, where we will also be screening recorded videos of our survivors. Be well. Almighty God, everlasting Father, the comfort of the sad, the strength of those who suffer. Let the prayers of your children who cry out in any tribulation come to you. Surround all who in solidarity stand to raise a voice against evil be heard. Cover those shaken by the senseless tragedy of the Holocaust, a tragedy we vow never to forget, a tragedy in which we respond never again. To every soul that is impacted, grant your mercy, grant your relief, Grant your refreshment. Through your mercy, we pray. Amen. It was said earlier in this service, um, it was brought up that this service has new meaning this time because of the events in, in Israel in the last six months. Um, and I've, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact words, but maybe the world has changed or maybe it hasn't. And one thing that I think really has not changed is we can bring peace by making music together. So if you turn to page 12, you'll see the words to let there be peace on earth. And if you are able, please stand and sing with us.